right, welcome back guys. This is Ivan from BrandingBiz.com. Uh, Happy New Year 2016. Uh, hopefully you had a great holiday and uh, you're ready to go back to work. Uh, so today what we're going to do, we're going to finish this project. Uh, this is going to be part three, final part. Uh, we're going to look at the keypad code and how uh, we read when we press the keypad and how we make the calculations uh, to uh, uh, deduct the uh, the amount that we enter on the keypad from the score player one or player two. So uh, we'll try to keep this one a little bit shorter than the last one. So let's get right to it and uh, look at the code. So let's go check it out. Okay, so here we are. Uh, you're gonna see in the window, I plugged in the uh, Dart scoreboard box. And as you can see, I already started the game with a score of 901. And we're at player one's turn. So now I'm gonna zoom in a little bit so you can see the keypad and the LCD a little bit better. There you go. Uh, so we're gonna go into code here. Uh, we're gonna look at the beginning of the code. This is the library that actually takes care of the keypad and we're defining the keypad here. So basically, the way I did it is that I have three variables, first number, second number, third number, and those are all set at 99 at the beginning. And that will help us determine uh, if we're entering the first number, the second number, or the third number on the keypad. And we'll see that uh, very soon. And then I have another variable that's gonna hold the, uh, the full number, uh, meaning if I enter one, four, six, these are separate numbers that are going to be put into these variables and then I'll make a calculation to add these numbers into 146 and right now we set it at zero at the beginning. Then we have uh, rows and columns for our keypad as you can see uh, this is a 3 by 4 keypad so it has uh, 12 buttons on it and then we're defining an array to say uh, where which one of these buttons are positioned where. So one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, uh, an asterisk, zero, and uh, the number sign here. And now the asterisk is going to be used for delete. Let's say you enter one four, you wanted to enter one three, so you could uh, press the asterisk to go back. Uh, the uh, number sign is going to be used as an enter key once you've done entering a number. And then we're defining which pins uh, of the keypad are connected to rows on the Nano. So we got 12, 11, 10, and 9 which correspond to the rows and the column. And we did a tutorial on uh, keypads and you can check that out at the top here if you're interested. And uh, Next we're actually um, initializing the library with all these uh, numbers that we put at the beginning here. So let's move along. Let's go down to the first thing we're going to look at. There's nothing in the setup for that. And we're going to get to the main loop. There it is. So uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to press a key. Well, I'm going to press 1. And as you can see, it put on the LCD the number 1. So let's see in the code how that happened. Uh, so basically we got a get key, keypad.getKey, that's going to be put into this variable here. And if this variable is not equal to no key, meaning we didn't press anything, then you don't do this part. But if it is, then we're going to do a switch case. So depending on which key we press, it's going to do one of these things here. So case 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, all the way down to 0, asterisk, and the number sign. So we press 1, so that would be this case here. So it's going to go in here, and it's going to call this function that we define check number, and in parentheses we put the number 1. Now the way this works is that when you put uh, the function and you put a value in there, it's going to be passed down to that function. So let's find this function which I put at the end. So let's go down, and there it is. So we got our check number function, and as you can see in parentheses now we have, we're, we're telling it is what the value you're going to receive is going to be an integer, and you're going to put it into variable x. So we passed over uh, the number 1. So this the x will be equal to 1. Now the way I'm doing this is that if first number is equal to 99, that means that we're entering the first number, since it's, uh, it's equal to 99, which it was. So it will go in here. It will say first number is equal to x, and 
set the cursor to 13 1 and print X so as you can see on the LCD we put the number that we pressed uh, else so let's say I enter a second number I'm gonna press 2 so now I put a 2 on so then I'm going back to my case at the beginning so case check number in parentheses 2 now so it's going back to the check number right here the integer now x is equal to 2 so if first number is equal to 99 it's not because we already pressed the first number and that first number was equal to 1 so it's not going to go to this part so it's going to go to the else if the second number is equal to 99 it is because that's the second number and at the beginning of the uh, code we set those numbers to 99 so it is equal to 99 so it's going to put the second number equal x which is going to be 2 in this instance and set the cursor one character after the first one and print x so it did that so I'm going to press 3 and now I have 1 2 3 so it goes back to the top comes back here integer x is equal to 3 now so it's going to check the first number it's not equal to 99 it's equal to 1 second number is equal to 2 so else that's the only one because we, we can only enter three numbers so third number is equal to x set the cursor 1 uh, further and then print the X. So that's the way this part works. So now we're going to see the delete key. So we're going to go back to our case and I'm going to press the asterisk which is delete. And as you can see it went back one number so now we only have one and two. So let's check the case for that. And here we are. This is a different function. It's delete number. We're not passing any values in this one. So let's find this function which is at the end also. Oh, there it was, and there it is. So delete number, so the way it checks, it checks in reverse. So if third number is not equal to 99, that means we're trying to delete the third number. Because if it was equal to 99, meaning it would mean that we didn't enter anything yet. So we're setting the cursor to 15.1, which is a position for the third number. We're printing a space just to remove, and we say the third number is equal to 99 now because we deleted it. And the same thing for second number. Same thing for first number. So if I press asterisk twice, it's going to delete the second. And now there's only one left, so I delete again, and it's gone. Now, let's do the calculation. So I'm going to enter, we have 901 right now on the screen. So let me move back a little bit. Let me go like this. Whoops, the other way. One more. Zoom in a little bit. There we go. So I have 901 right now, so I'm going to enter 11, 1, 1, and as you can see we have 1, 1 now, so it did the case 1 twice, check number, and you put those numbers on. So now I'm going to press the, whoops, sorry, let me go back. So now I'm going to press the number key to calculate the total, so it will be 901 minus 11, enter. So let's check our case, let's go to the number sign right here and now it's calling this function subtract number so let's find that function should be near the bottom here and there it is this one's a little bit longer but it's uh, it's pretty much doing the same thing so it first of all it checks which player turn it is so it will remove that uh, value from the right player and then it checks if the turn number is equal to 99 and second number is equal to 99 and first number is not equal to 99 that means we only have one number that has been entered. So then it says, well, then it's easy. We only have one number. So key full number is equal to first number. Let's say we enter two. So that, that key full number will be equal to two. And then it checks if the player score minus that key full number, let's suppose it was two, is greater than or equal to zero because we don't want to go negative number in the player score. If it is if it if it will be bigger then we're saying player score one is equal to player score one minus key full number that way we're deleting um, then player turn is equal to two because we were at player one so then we're switching to the other player and we put the display uh, the score now if the second number is not equal to 99 and the third number is equal to 99 that means we entered two numbers so let's say we entered 1 and 2, which would make it 12. So we say key full number is equal to first number times 10 
because the 1, if we put a second number, would be times 10, because it would be 10 plus 2. So, n plus the second number. So if we take 1 times 10 equals 10, plus the 2 equals 12. And then we do the same check here to make sure we don't go negative, switch the player to 2, and then display the, uh, the uh, display here will display that new score. If, and then we <clears throat> just keep checking, if the third number is not equal to 99, that means basically we enter three numbers, so let's say 1, 2, 3 was entered, which uh, then the keyful number would be equal to the first number, which was the 1, times 100, plus the second number, times 10, plus the third number. So 1, 100, 2, 20, 3, so it would be 123, 123. And we do the same thing. And here, basically, the difference is it's for player 2. If we're at player 2, then we will do this part. And uh, that's it. That's, uh, that's all there is to it. That's the way I did it. Um, like I always say, there are many ways to do this. This is just one way. Um, but, you know, if you guys want to try uh, do it uh, another way, that's great. Uh, you could probably shorten the code. You could probably do better than I did. And uh, hopefully it gets you started. So that's it. So let's go back to the main camera and wrap it up. All right. So that's going to do it for today. Uh, so we finished this uh, project. It took quite a while. I mean, uh, three parts. Uh, we're not going to do big projects like this all the time. Uh, because sometimes if you're not interested in a project and we spend three videos on it, you might find that a little long to wait for a new one. Uh, so we're going to go back to our regular tutorials, uh, meaning we're going to look at the uh, different parts, how to connect them, how to uh, program it in the Arduino so we can communicate with them. Uh, so we got a couple of new tutorials coming up. Uh, like I always say, we're going to try to keep it to one a week. And if uh, we have the time, uh, we'll do uh, two a week if possible. And that's what we're striving for in 2016. Um, also, like I always say, guys, uh, leave comments in the uh, YouTube uh, section below. Uh, if you have any projects you would like us to do or give us any suggestions uh, for upcoming tutorials, anything you might think of, leave it in the comments. And if it's something that I can do and that I know about or I'll try to find out, uh, of course, I won't be able to do all of them. Uh, because I don't know everything. <laughs> so uh, anything I can do, I will try to do for you guys. Also, I'd like to mention that if you guys need any parts or you'd like to experiment with uh, the, the tutorials we're doing, uh, please check out our website at brainybus.com. Uh, we sell most of the parts in which we do our uh, tutorials with. So uh, if you're interested, uh, go check it out. And uh, that's going to do it for today. So uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed this project. And if you didn't, well, we have a new one coming uh, very soon. So uh, if you're not subscribed to our YouTube channel, please do. And uh, as always, my name is Ivan, and I hope to catch you guys real soon. Take care.